Paradise Report is recorded in front of a live stadium audience. As such, the use of industrial language is not uncommon. If you're listening in the company of wee innocent ears, turn off now and listen back later. Although, let's face it, half of them could teach us a thing or two about swearing. Hail Hail and welcome to Paradise Report number 34 on Hail Hail Media. This week, with a title almost in sight, Celtic faced a Bernie and won a win at home coupled with victory for St Mirren over Motherwell at Firth Park at the same time would finally seal it. Although there wasn't much the team could do about the St Mirren game, the target was simple. Beat a Bernie for the first time this season and hope for good news. Regardless of the result in the afternoon, we were going out to celebrate at another Paul Larkin boot bunch at the Celtic Social Club on London Road. So once the game was done and dusted, there's some audio from the speeches as well as some music from the live band that night, the Quadra Hope you enjoy it. Good afternoon from Celtic Park. It is a three o'clock kick-off against Tubbs and we're here to maybe, just maybe, see Celtic clinch the league title today. Uh, uh, the maths is simple or not. It does require Celtic to win today and also for St Mirren to win at Mullerwell. Uh, exactly the same time, so I'm sitting here listening to Radio Scotland at the moment. Um, that's depressing in its own way because they're talking about the, the league reconstructions being dismantled because St Marin and Roscount are going to vote on it. Uh, so I'm against it. But uh, enough of that. Sure, we'll hear nothing but that for the rest of the coming weeks to come. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's all about today's game. Uh, the Celtic lineup is as follows: Fraser Foster in goal, a welcome return for Michael Lustig, alongside F.A. Ambrose, Kelvin Wilson, Emilio Izaguirre, uh, in midfield four of Charlie Mulgrew, Victor Wanyama, who's appealing the suspension against St Mirren last week, Joe Ledley, Chris Commons has recovered from the ankle hockey picked up at St Mirren, and up front Gary Hooper and Anthony Stokes. On the bench is Lucas Soska as usual, alongside Rami Gershon. Georges Samaras, Baram Kayo, Tony Watt, Paddy McCourt and Tom Rogic. Uh, Rogic scored for the under-20s uh, on Monday as the Dal McGear. Unfortunately, Dylan hasn't made it by the looks of it, so maybe we'll see Tom Rogic later. Depends how the game goes. Uh, Hibs, maths for them is quite simple as well. They need to win today to make the top six. And even then, they need results to go uh, their way elsewhere as well. Uh, so it's unlikely Hibs will be top six. However, they will be trying to go out for the win in the hope that doesn't work out for them. They also trying uh, not get beat today because Celtic haven't beaten them in the uh, two previous games this season. Two East Road here back in September and was followed up with a 1 0 defeat at Easter Road at the end of December. So it should be an interesting game today. Hopefully, Celtic have full strength and uh, uh, full pelt as well. And continue the excellent home form we've had since the turn of the year at least. I think we've only had won one game and we failed to score any less than four goals. And that was the game against Mullerwell when we won 1 0. Alright, here come the two teams now. Celtic and the Greenaway Hoops as per usual. Hubs in all yellow. And we up. Uh, Green Brigade, we've got several banners, including one that's uh, an SM symbol wrapped around the, the hands with a red white scarf wrapped around it. There is a banner with some words on it, but I can't see for this angle, unfortunately. One of the banners kicking about the huddle board, the uh, football without the fans is nothing, you can see there's a well. It's a, a CQN banner saying all certain fans against the ball. Calvin Wilson appears to be today's captain. Banner 
I'll say something about your repression will never be you or something. Going to ice and handshakes and all done. I'll sit on over there. Better huddle. All right, today's effort is somebody I've never heard of. It'll be shot if I kick off. I'm going to go in my ear. Let's get cracking. Quite a cagey start, this. It's uh, 11 minutes gone. Uh, Chris Collins has had a turn and shoot from outside the box. Which is a. Uh, oh, that took me nick off a couple of defenders, but never really anything bad. Lee Griffiths is through a goal now. Good save by Fraser Foster. The offside flag was up, though. So, uh, that's the. Uh, Two chances in pretty close succession. So I'll say flag. If there's a force, I'll both save it as well. Colin Short just uh, getting hit straight into Ben Williams' arms. This is actually quite hard to do. Uh, watch out one game, have people talking about you on the other, and I've got some people talking with me as well. I tell you what, I've got a lot of respect for commentators doing this. I'm sure they have people speaking in the rear all the time. Go for Celtic, Chris Collins. Holmes is scoring. Ball in from wide left from Mulgrew. Went to Hooper, he played it into Common Jones, but he miscontrolled it to start with, but that miscontrol helped him get past the defence. And he was able to fire beyond Ben Williams. So just on to the 14th minute now. Celtic take the lead. Still no scoring at Far Park, unfortunately. Corner to Celtic now. The Lustig uh, went back to us and it deflected behind, so it'll be a target ball group with us. It's coming up in 20 minutes. Mulgrew whips it into the back, cleared by Hibbs, double cleared and as far as Commons this time, he tries to head it back in, Hibbs can now get it clear and break perhaps. It's Wade with Lee Griffiths at the moment, it's Tina and Azigiri, scores it to their seven, Wilson holds him off, tries to get it clear. Just as far as Azagiri, he wishes to make the strike up at it. So, that was for now. Still, she's played it out wide to Mulgrew. Mulgrew taking his forever there. The defender blocked it. It was a good move before that. As uh, Hooper and Stokes linked up well to get Stokes in behind. The defence closed in at Stokes. He played it out wide to Mulgrew. But unfortunately, Mulgrew then took the long way in. Nothing came out. What a brilliant one cut by Stokes and Hooper there. Hooper is running into defence, knocked it wide to Stokes, who waited long enough with a well weighted pass into Hooper. Uh, and he was in on goal. And he tried to place it past the uh, keeper and didn't get enough on it. Ben Williams was able to bounce on it. So 27 minutes going, still 1 0 Celtic. Had a few chances now though. Oh, come on. Uh, a bit of a stoppage now. Charlie Ogres had a bit of a nasty head knock. Just before that, I'm sure they had a corner up when uh, Lee Griffiths hit it off Victor Wanyama, but the <laughs> three pointed tangle kick. Dreadful decision. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened to Charlie Mulgrew. I'm not sure if he had on the a defender or if he hit the, the ground quite hard. It's a sore one though. Uh, Fizzy was on at the moment, checking him out. Right, Mulgrew is back on his feet. So, uh, 33 minutes going. We've got a wee bit of stoppage time in this first half. I think Mulgrew is going to be alright. Mm -hmm. 
Just lost the goal for Barton. What a good back run again. Referee's <laughs> waved him on. He's back on. Has he got to run about though? <laughs> well, meanwhile, Lee Griffiths seems to have just been played through it. Takes a touch, knocks it back. It's headed clear by Ambrose. Wanyama takes it. <laughs> Gets it clear to Mulgrew. Goes it up to Stokes. Stokes is one on one with a defender. Tries to go by him. The defender looked like he trapped him, and the referee's waved at me his feet. <laughs> it wasn't it great? But, uh, he did seem to run into him and then knocked the ball and himself passed him on. Comes now on the attack. That's a poor ball. So it frees a four start. And that's that danger over again. And with 37 minutes on their clock, Mother will have just gone to go up. So um, that's two goals that Mother need for us to win the title, would it? And with the sounds of that game so far, that's not happening. Two dunks in a minute for Chris Collins and his ankle there with Hibs players. Two separate Hibs players as well. Makes you wonder exactly what's going on with that. Whether I've been uh, sending the players out to target him just in case his ankle's dodgy. Anyway, it's a free kick to Celtic. We're into the final minute in the first half. Now we're more great to whip it in. Cleared by Hibs only as far as Hooper. Tries to knock it back to F. Ambrose. Ambrose whips it in. And it's cleared. And St Mirren have just equalised. Just before half time, St Mirren are level at Firth Park. So, interesting now. Anyway, free kick came in the hand uh, some free kick for Hubs. One minute added on. So we're in there now. Come on, sell it, get it off! If we're trying to control it, does eventually plays it. It's, uh, uh, Commons tries to play it through to Stokes, does he make it? Stokes naps in, no. Cuts it back, there's no one there. Oh. And Stokes has just sat down because I thought he had hit, uh, been hit. And Hubs take it off Chris Commons and clear it up the line. So it's out for a throw. Stokes holding his ankle. He's up his feet now. Stokes doing what? Back up again. He did cut it back well, there's just nobody there to get it. And there's a half time whistle. Took so long to take that throw in. After it got cleared at the park. But uh, half time 1 0, Celtic doing their job. So, man, an equaliser makes things interesting still. We are one goal from the title, effectively, at the moment. Unfortunately, it's not a goal we can score. Alright, Hams are back at the park already. Celtic just emerging now. Ready to go for a second half. Doesn't look like there's any substitutions. The bad news for Celtic is that uh, Dundee are beating Kilmarnock. Aberdeen and Dundee United are drawing. And if that news has been filtered through to Hibs, they know that uh, if things stay like that and Hibs can somehow get back and win this game, they'll be in the top six. That's exactly the results they need. The only result going against Hibs at the moment is that they want to throw them. So they might come out fired up in the second half. Anyway, have to kick the second half off. It's up to Celtic to make sure they don't get a chance. Uh, good move there by Celtic. Eventually right, so culminating Stokes having a shot. I don't think he quite caught it right. It seemed to just sort of bobble towards the goalkeeper. He had to uh, dive on it up. So uh, three minutes gone, and uh, that's half's kind of started the way the second half ended. First half ended, sorry. Celtic under control. Hibs. Sniffing away at things. See what they can nick. Two out Celtic, six minutes gone in the second half. Ball in from Wishing on the right hand side. I think it was Stokes who held off his man. Turned around and fired it past Ben Williams. Oh, sorry, Chris Collins was hit up. So it was Stokes. I wish I could have had well. I played my Collins up. As I said there, look, the one goal for the, the title isn't a goal we can score. But we've given ourselves a cushion. 
as things stand, Motherwell can only catch us on goal difference, which still isn't enough to declare it a fashion of Right, there's a roar going around Celtic Park at the moment. I've got the radio and I can't hear anything. No, it's somebody at it again. No, I don't know what that was about. Uh, we had a, a shot that she saved and then a corner, which is uh, not much came out. At 54 in the clock, it's still one each at Fort Park. Oh, that is woeful, absolutely woeful. Brilliant ball up the field for uh, it was Hibbs corner, first I caught it and played in Gary Hooper. Hibbs defender made an arse at Gary Cooper. Gary Hooper tried to play it across, going to face a goal. And it was a dreadful ball. Commons could, it, had, it was like bounced off a wall. The Commons, there was no way he was trapping that. They ran over the light to the goal line, mate. Oh, that should have been 3 0. That's what happens, you combine Hooper and Commons to get Cooper. Right, 58 minutes on the clock. Perhaps you're ready to have a substitution here. Uh, number 14's away off, and number 11's coming on. Substitution for Hibs. Oh, the uh, horseman of the Apocalypse yeah. banner has uh, made a reappearance. The last one, the Craigie White one. Stokes was outside there, but uh, wasn't it? It's deflected across goal, and that's a corner. <laughs> I think the deflection could have went anywhere. I think it was nobody in the middle anyway. But uh, Stokes did what? Just whacked it across the face of goal. Just corner on the other mark now. Corner at Celtic, which I think it's going to be common state now. Shot one to Ledley, one two with Commons. Commons cutting in now, stops, plays it back to Ledley. When he's got a chance to whip it in, doesn't, holds it up, pushing it into the box, plays it across the face of goal. Oh, it's a great match in header. Michael Listing makes it 3 0. Hibs are raging about something, moaning at the ref, moaning at the linesman. No idea what they're going on about. Looked perfectly good to me. Ladley hit a byline. Wrapped it in. I don't know, are they claiming handballs on them? I don't see anything wrong with it. What a head to me. Not the greatest of replays, to be honest, but I'm still moaning the face off a ref about it. I don't think somebody can even have seen that, they were finding the banner. <laughs> it's just come down now. <laughs> Alright, what was going on? The banner is now moving. <laughs> Stay in a walk along and all stand with Oxford. Heard in another sub. It's a morning, morning, they never got a penalty. Still 1 1 now. Oh, that was tight. So, we bought a guy who put it was well weighted. Flag went up. That's 3 0 up. I'm still have a sub ready, it appears to be waiting now. Uh, the fans have got to, got to concentrate on a hero from last season who uh, made a reappearance in the, the press yesterday. 38 for Hibs getting off. 
Tony something from the I don't know any other players. Lee Graffers and Ben Williams, that's about it, oh, I know. It's two subs they've made now. Just Salvador is getting ready to come on for Celtic. Had on the attack midway through this half now. Lee Griffiths, great tackle. Griffiths now done a hold in his head. The ball hasn't gone out, so the referee's had to stop it. Still a bit premature with that today. The Craig White banner has now reached the southwest corner. Samaras coming on for Michael Lustig. Who uh, has been out for a while, it's against 68 minutes. Uh, it's been quite a good game, to be honest. So, uh, go for the struggle as well. Can I look upon? Right, the Craig White banner is now reaching the director's box. Hey, Sam, it under that. What in the banner got, but it's gone underneath, just underneath. The Samaras has put the ball into the top of the keeper. They want the banner to go up onto the director's box, it's not happening. They're having to pull it down. He's going to go down the front of the south stand, on the back. Ah, well. 72 minutes gone. Still one each at the other game. Still 3 0 at the other game. <laughs> I'll try to get it up into the, the, the commentators. It's not going up there either. <laughs> Comes far down at the moment, get injured. Up, up, up. Get treatment. Trying to get that banner to go up. No, I'm having it up. I don't need to tell you what Mary's testing in next. Hubsman's got to take it. We've moved it up into position. We could get it over. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Stewart are blocking it off. It's a bit barricaded off. And Hubsman's on there moving for it. No, it's got up to the top of the south stand, so it's going back away again. And play has resumed on the park. 74 minutes gone now. Chance of get to the boardroom. It's now immediately behind them. And the folk can now are waving up. Not quite the boardroom, but pretty close. I'd imagine it'll probably all get all the way back to the green again. Tom Rogic is in there to come on now for Celtic. Any advantage on Masonic? 
Paul has uh, stopped because we got a free kick. Had to retake it after a good ball to Hooper, unfortunately, because it was a uh, ball was still moving. And we're all made to sub before Rogic comes on. Yeah, free kick before Rogic comes on. It's <laughs> Commons out wide right now. Is it back to Ambrose? Ambrose is under a bit of pressure. That's what slides in and takes it. Only the flex back to Victor Wanyama. Good defender there for Celtic. Cleared the ball out of the six yard box. The ball came back in again and Wilson was heading the clear. And Rogic will now come on for Chris Collins. No hat trick today, Chris. But the job done, I think. Does it look to remove him very freely? So that's probably a good job to make, to be honest. 12 minutes remaining. Uh, the game at Love's, uh, sorry, the game at Fur Park uh, is a little bit behind us, apparently. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes uh, once we're finished. Yeah, especially if it's still uh, one each like it is now. It's 2 1 St. Martin! We can win the title today! Right, uh, it sounds like as Lewis Guy has uh, put some Murren in front as somebody's down. Sick <laughs> <laughs> brigade just catching up with me. <laughs> I did shout it loudly. It looks like Effie Ambrose is down. Was nearly a fourth. All right, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> it really was a game. He put the ball into the box, cracking ball in. Hooper head or wide. The flag also went up. So even if it had been a target, wouldn't have counted. Paddy McCourt is stripped and ready to come on. 82 on the clock, which means there'll be 77 on the clock at uh, Far Park. I'm going to be hanging about a while, I think. Uh, yeah, the final Celtic substitution is Paddy McCourt. He will be coming on for Gary Hooper. <laughs> Six minutes remaining. I think it's 3 0 and 6 minutes remaining, and the three points are secure here. But everything is uh, on the radio at the moment. Still 2 1 to St. Marin. It's been off to crown us title champions uh, today. <laughs> Paddy McCourt in the ball at the moment. Pass it, Paddy, I run! Not over a pass, suppose it to Azagiri. It's not the greatest of passes, and it's a throw to Hibbs. Craig about Banner update, it's almost back to where the Green Brigade up. He really has made it all the way in. Uh, I'm back again. Hems on the attack, Kelvin Wilson plays it. Oh, it almost gives him a corner for nothing. Ambrose retrieves it. Belter. Ambrose looking for a pass. What are you doing? Just keeping the ball, really. Play is out of trouble. Eventually has to clear it up the line. And goes straight to Hibsport. So Hibs can come again. You've got a point in there, left hand side. Uh, so I have to keep them at bay. So, wide right for Hubs. So, Ledley eventually cuts it across. And Stokes, Stokes racing down our left hand side now. Was it back to him, McCourt? Goes to Van Yama, who's spreading it to the right hand side now. F. Ambrose now. Rogic back to Ambrose. He's come back to Kevin Wilson in his own half. Wide left again to Charm. Launch forward, doesn't make it to Samaras, and that's going to clear. 
and the banner is coming our way now, heading towards the house once in the other direction. It's not quite going to pass over my head. To the men in those far back. Give it a spell, as for Hibs, Lee Griffiths is turned. Turn the long ground, get taken out by Joel Ledley. So it's a free kick to Hibs with three minutes remaining. See what Hibs can do with us. Griffiths the hat up. It's the walls in position. All right, whistle goes. Griffiths hits the wall with it. Bounces clear. Pretty poor for Griffiths up. James McFadden has just equalised. It is 2 2 at Far Park. We are not champions as it stands. Oh, a deflection! Oh, just wide! <laughs> Shot for Victor Wanyama there. Deflected, was well away from the goalkeeper and just wide to the post. Craig White Banner has made it all the way to the way fans. There's a big gap between us, was never going to get across to them. It's moving down, stand again. Board is up, two minutes added on. Two minutes, Andy, two minutes. Corner for Celtic, stay in and keep our hands. It's launched forward. As again, he cuts it out though. Goes it to Rogic. Bad in the court now. Got running at him, plays in Stokes. Defender holds him up, but Stokes has the ball. Looking for a pass now, tries to turn his man, gets taken out, this on the ground, nothing given to the ref. Weather uh, picks it on midfield. Pass it to Wanyama. Wanyama to Wilson. Wilson out wide to Ambrose. Pass it back to Wilson. Charlie Walgrew wide left now, plays it to Emilio Zagiri, McCourt. Takes on his man, holds it up for Emilio Zagiri, and plays it forward to Rogic. Back to Zagiri, out wide to Paddy McCourt again. But tries to take on his man, it hits him as it goes out. It's a throw in the hubs. Game must be just about done now. So the possession again. Wanyama now. Rogic. Wide right to Ambrose. Mullowal just missed a great chance according to the radio. The banner is passing me right now. You can hear the rustling. As again, he has a shot. Defender clears up. Flag was up. It's an offside for the. Uh... Oh, it's good up a field. The match is over here, it's 3 0. Celtic have a three points. They are three points from the title. Two of those might get dropped today. Unless the money can get a winner, it's not going to be all three though. It is just a long wait now. There's two each. Not many people are leaving. Oh, I just need to wait and see if anything happens. Joe Ladder winning the match here. Some people are leaving, some people hanging about, wait and see.
Timmons, one of the rights, along with South Lanerne, has gone to Joel Edwin. We're going to Joel Edwin, Timmons, one of the rights, for South Lanerne. Here's the music. 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 Here so, um, the goal difference is uh, such a massive difference that they're not going to realistically overtake us now. But we can't officially declare ourselves as champions tonight. We need one more point from one of our final five games. Which will come after a split, and we don't find out when that is till Monday. So, uh, <laughs> for now, it's home, or for my case, the Paul Larkin pump up at lunch. <laughs> Hey, hey. Differences for last time, world class band, world class artist as usual, and uh, there's no buffy, but there's soup across the road if you want it, and that's the only way you're getting the right. Uh, just like to thank for the opportunity to, to let us on here. Uh, a couple of times, it's only my third ever time in here. The first time was about 20 years ago, and I told the filthiest joke of my life. Unfortunately, the four guys burst out laughing when we were all parish priests, so I'll never swear in this building again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, obviously we're all here tonight to celebrate the ones, right? We're ringing up can be a lot up here now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, so we're all here for Paul's night. Hopefully Paul's already come up uh, doing a reading from the book, which he hasn't done before. It's his first uh, going down the route of being an author, writing about an actual book instead of experiences. Uh, I find Paul's work, uh, I used to work away, read a lot of books. Paul's work to me is like the Celtic version of Irving Welsh. We can all relate to it. Everybody's in this room as a Celtic fan, hopefully. We'll make a few stragglers somewhere. But Paul's got this night arranged by everybody in the room here tonight because we're all Celtic people and we've all put the word out what's going on. There's no agenda for the BBC or other people promoting his work. He's number one on Amazon, etc. like that. So we're very lucky to have him as representing is um, but in difficult burn, burn times like 94 where there's, there's things going on and we're like, very related to where Paul's book is and how 94 was done out with people on trains we can sit now with that thing if I can ever read what's on it and let each other know what's happening um, Paul's one of the few things like the Celtic Trust who this will be an option for it off time right but you can trust with the word Celtic because if you're a fan of the club, Celtic's so important to you as a person, it's part of your life, it's what you grow up as. And a lot of people will maybe take Celtic for granted. There's people who work across the road and get paid a great wage and they're educated and they've got degrees, and, but they don't know what it is. They've never got a copy bus, they've never been on your supporters bus, they've never been jailed with you, they've never been piled with you, they've always sat in a nice seat and got on with it, sort of thing, you know. But as most of you know, hopefully, we're just fans and we don't, we don't want anything else apart from it and we're, we're very lucky there's, there's other football teams that didn't last as long as us because I've got good guys like Paul. Um, you know, you might know, you might not agree with some things Paul say, so he'll, he'll go head to head, he won't say head to head, he won't address all your head, but he'll try and talk the point out with you and get it sorted out. But, you trust him with your football team. I don't know about anybody else across the road. And that's why we're here tonight. 
world class artist, and then we'll get the quad for Fenians. Does he get any better than that? Can he God bless? Oh, the PLC. and carry just like the handle. Yeah, yeah, introducing heavyweight champion in oil, Paul Larkin. <laughs> Guaranteed, Tiggins will be back for the next one. Now we're going to get up here again. No. <laughs> Good evening, supporters of the world's most successful football club. It's good to see all your scars of healed for Dundee on Boxing Day as well, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Want to see that again there, I missed that? Shut up, you. <laughs> now, <laughs> first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming along tonight. I mean, it's a, it's a real privilege to be standing in front of you all because, you know, I know times are hard and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, the team's not been doing that great recently. But um, it's a real privilege to be standing in front of you um, and I hope you're enjoying the free entry as well, because like Charles Green, I need to give away tickets to get a guarantee a full house, you know. <laughs> but we're here to celebrate the launch of The Last Pearl Diver, and that was a, a kind of mission for me to write about a, a time in Celtic's history where you kind of needed to be a real Celtic supporter to survive it. Because at that time, um, we were sort of... We were kind of up against it everywhere, and um, we can So I kind of wanted to write about something that was that showed that, despite what we were up against with the kind of the juggernaut that was coming through Ibrox and the media and all that kind of thing, was that Celtic supporters never backed down, they never lay down, and they fought back. And there was a series of small victories, kind of in amongst that, and. Uh, that's what I kind of try to write about in this book, because at the end of the day, um, we might not have known it at the time, but what Sally supporters did in 1994 was, was, a, was basically a miracle, because when the Bank of Scotland were trying to shut us down for a 9 million overdraft, they were authorising a 100 million overdraft for another club. And Celtic, whatever you think of them now, then, or whatever, never ever had friendly bank managers but somebody else did. And it's, it's interesting to see that that friendly bank manager is now ruining half the clubs in Scottish football. So, the last pearl diver was something that I'd thought about for a long time. It was effectively a time in my life where I was about... Oh, glamorous assistant. Thank you. It was a time in my life where I wasn't honestly sure if we were ever going to come back again. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, at that time, you know, we were going through all the sorts of the old board and all that kind of thing. And I don't know what you research into this book to kind of try and find out what the old board were really like at that time. And it would have been easy to just slaughter them and whatever, and because, you know, we hated them then and stuff. We hated them forever. But it was clear that the old board, Michael Kelly aside, who was just a cunt. Um, had the tiger by the tail, you know. They were in charge of this massive football club and they didn't know what to do with it. And so, what they actually did um, was kind of set up boardrooms and work out how they could kind of keep a hold of the club and all that kind of thing. Meanwhile, a, re a revolution was going on right outside them. And, you know, it was kind of... It's, it's easy to look back on that now and think, right, oh, that was fantastic, you know, we all kind of rose up on that. But anybody who was alive at that time and supported Celtic knows it was absolutely dreadful. I mean, it was awful. We had the Rangers with, you know, tons of money and all that kind of thing, and they were winning league after league after league, and we were winning nothing. And we effectively knew as well then that every time we lost a trophy, they would gain one. That's what Scottish football was like for us then. And it's... Incredible to think that when you see clubs now struggling, nothing happens, you know? There isn't any movement to save them. There isn't any kind of uh, 
you know, what you would call collective, people just basically saying, right, we've had enough. And yet that happened at Celtic. So why did that happen at Celtic and it doesn't happen anywhere else? And the reason that happened is because Celtic is a unique football club. It's a unique football club because it was formed for the right reasons. And it went on to become the best team in the world. And that's just incredible. That's the greatest story ever told in football. The fact that a club that was formed to feed and clothe the poor and ignorant Irish of this city, no one mile along, ended up being the best team in the world. And for everybody in here, it's still the best team in the world. And also, we knew then that nobody would help us. And that's really important, you know, because when other people last year sat back and expected the helping hand or the Masonic handshake, it never came. And that's important. It's really important. And each and every one of you in here can be proud of that because everything you've ever achieved in your life has been done off your own back and your own honesty and your own commitment. You didn't have to join a secret society or you didn't have to put your hand out and ask for help for other people. And that's why you're still standing here now and that's why Celtic are still standing here now. See, the book's about small victories, and one of the, the first small victories that kind of gets mentioned in the book is uh, June 1st, 1993. Now, that was us on the cusp of, you know, yet another crap season, etc, etc, etc. Coming off the back of Rangers winning the treble and completing it at Celtic Park. It was a dagger in the heart for every Celtic supporter on the planet. So the Celtic boat and one of the few acts of wisdom decided that as the jungle was going to be seated next year that we couldn't have Rangers fans being the last people to stand in the jungle. So what they did was they organised a kickabout amongst a few celebrities, a few ex-players and they called it the Blow Away the Blues Party and they advertised for a couple of hundred people to come along and stand in the jungle and cleanse the jungle of Rangers. And 25,000 people turned up. 25,000, so imagine yourself in that situation, because I was there. Some people who went to stand in the jungle for the last time I ended up standing in the Celtic end. And they didn't care. They just they didn't care because they were there. Because they knew what Celtic meant. And basically, at that point, when I looked around at that time, I thought, this club's never going to die. It'll never die. When 25,000 people turn up for a kickabout on a Wednesday night in Pish and Main in Glasgow, you know you've got something special in your hands. And that's what Rangers never heard. They never heard that. Because when they went through their troubles in the 80s... Fuck Rangers! Thank you. Say that again. Fuck Rangers! A bit louder. Fuck Rangers! It's not loud enough. You need to be in safe with conviction. So when Rangers went through their troubles in the 80s... When Rangers went through trouble within the 80s, you couldn't get a game of golf in Scotland on a Saturday. Because <laughs> he could. Fucking on I didn't think Peter Law was going to turn up in the 80s. But the thing about it is, it sounds all serious and it sounds all kind of downtrodden and everything was a nightmare and all Fuck Rangers! It sounds all downtrodden and it sounds all like it was all a nightmare and that. But there were small victories amongst it all the time because that's what the Celtic supposed to always been like. There's always a humour involved. And one of the things I remember involves a guy who's sitting in here right now. Now, he asked me not to mention him because he used to play for Hearts. But he'll be the one singing the Mace Rebel songs when the band starts, so I don't know about it. And what happened was we were in a, a hotel in 1994. And I was about 20 and he was about 15. And Scotland were playing Ireland at rugby that day. And Celtic had to go beat and we were 17 points behind Rangers at the time. So it wasn't a great time. And so I was kind of half pissed and... There's a couple of ladies at the bar who I was trying my charms that are currently working on you. And 
I'm t so I'm kind of talking to these two ladies and I'm trying to involve him as my wee brother, although he's not, and trying to catch his eye and stuff like that. And so what happened was he came across eventually and kind of walked over like John Wayne, like High Noon and stuff like that. And the first question he asked him is, what well, fucking football team is supported? And I was like, aye, cheers, mate. So, so that was a lost cause. So after that, I was berating him all night, and we went to the toilet, and we were kind of having a piss, and I was saying, what the fuck did you say this for, and blah, 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 and I was like, oh, I'm really, really sorry, and stuff. And at this point, one of the Irish rugby supporters that was over for the rugby to, to see Ireland play Scotland came in, and he asked us if we were at the rugby that day, and I said, no, 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 I was at the football. And he said, oh, really, where did you, what, what team was it? And I said Celtic, and he went, oh, ha, 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 17 points clear, get up, you know, this kind of thing. And this was a guy for Donegal. And it transpired that it was a Donegal or in Jordan. He was over. So, at that point, I was just like saying to Chris that not only have you lost us a few buds, I wrote, this fat orange bastard gave me abuse. You know, how much, so Chris was in bits and stuff like that. And, you know, I was kind of being berating him. I said, look, let's just get out, finish our drinks, and that's it. We walked back into the hotel, all the guys from Donegal, the Orange Order, were sitting there. And as I walked to, they all started giving us abuse and singing championies and all that kind of thing. Now, the bit of the story I didn't tell was that the guy had said that he was feeling sick that day because he looked bet on Ireland that day for £200 to beat Scotland. So we were kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So as we walked out, and they all saw me, they gave me the abuse, etc, etc, etc. And the both Chris sitting over there starts shouting, singing, 200 pounds from Donegal. <laughs> Completely redeemed himself that night. He also put the heat on the Ulster bus that night too, but that's a different story. But these were the kind of things that were happening non-stop. Um, and what was interesting was that whilst 1994 felt like the end of the world, when Fergus came, it was the beginning of a new era. And it, and it frightened Scotland because they'd written us off at that time. They'd completely written us off and never expected us to ever challenge Rangers again. So at that point, Fergus came in, the great Tommy Burns became manager, money started to be spent, and the comeback was started. And the comeback almost was completed in 1996 until Jim, Jim Farry saw a contract. And when Jim Farry saw a contract, it ended up with us losing our, one of our best players for six weeks. That's when we knew we were scared. Because we signed a guy in February who couldn't kick a bottle the 5th of April. And people asked why and all that kind of thing. And we found out through the bonnet. Excuse me. But three years later, it would, his registration was deliberately withheld. And I always think that when you're angering people like the SFA and the people that run Rangers or Safecore and that, you must be doing something right. And that proved that we were doing something right when we were on the road back. And it's interesting because at that time, um, the first season, the first real season under Fergus, was the Hamden season. Now, you might remember when a team called Gretna came into the SPL, they were allowed to ground share at Fur Park. But when we needed a ground, we got charged a million pounds, they were told never to fly the Irish tricolor over the stadium. So that's the kind of thing that we were always up against, and that's the kind of thing I try to capture in the book. That no matter what they threw at us, there were always people like yourself who would fight back. You would always fight back. You would never take it. You wouldn't lie down to it. And that's what they've never been able to defeat, you know? My father used to say constantly, he used to bring the Celtic honours out and show how much we'd won and say we should be have won double that and we would have won double that had we not been for referees and the continuous cheating we have to experience for the SFA and stuff. And it's a tribute to everybody in here that you managed to stick with it. Because if you lived through Rangers' nine in a row era, it was hellish. I mean, there's no getting away from it. It was absolutely dreadful. It never looked like there was going to be an end in sight. And the end in sight came in 1998, when we ended the staying in Scottish football and stopped being beaten 
Er wordt niet naar de rol gehad. En dan zit die voor zijn dode member aan. Wie hebben we stopt in de tijd in de rol? Wie preserveert dat wordt niet naar de rol gehad? De vast team die wordt niet naar de rol. And the interesting thing is that I was listening last week and, and I was thinking to myself, you know, things move so quickly in Scottish football now with social media and stuff, you've got to keep relevant and you've got to keep things on the ball. And I was wondering what material could I have, you know, struggling for material for the boot launch to try and be relevant. And then Craig White came back. <laughs> myself about Craig White when he came back was, why did you not put your, fo your name forward for being the new Pope? <laughs> Mate, we know you've got one joke. <laughs> so, it was, with much hilarity, the safe Pope story goes on. And... As I said on Twitter during the week, that when you actually strip all of doing and you realise about, you know, who owns what and who said what and all that kind of thing, the real story about that is the fact that the realisation dawns on their hopes that they are never going to challenge us again. Never. Um, that I wanted to talk about for this book. Um, first of all, the inspirations for it. Now, some of the people that are, that are characterising this book are sitting in here now, uh, you know, various things and all that kind of thing. But the last book launch is when I was kind of writing it, and I was kind of wondering about how I should finish it and stuff like that. Uh, and then somebody got on the stage that night and made a speech and continually talked about Celtic men this and Celtic men that. And Lynn Murphy, who's in here, shouted, what about the women? And that inspired me to finish the book because it's a kind of underplayed thing all the time, the fact that Celtic have got probably the biggest female support on the planet. And the nicest looking, as you can see around here. <laughs> and, you know, and there are people in here like Jane Hamilton and Chris O'Neill and Evan Watson, people like that, who are in the book, but based on, their characters are based on name and stuff like that. And, and I'm sure you've all got friends in that yourself who you're inspired by in that, because I'm always inspired by, you know, ordinary people, working class people who end up changing the world. And, with it, you know, without these kind of people, where are Celtic? Because... When the last time Glasgow faced this kind of poverty that it's facing now was in 1884, when a man called Andrew Kerens decided that enough was enough. And he formed what he called the Penny Dinners. And that meant that a man could feed his family for a penny. And through, within three years of that, the man had created an institution that each and every one of us paid tribute to every single week and worship it. And that's, that's important because that's history. And we retain our history. We didn't need to buy our history. Because we live our history. And before I go and, 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 and bore you with a reading in the book, I'll just say this. 
that when you read this book, and hopefully you do, um, you'll realise that if you want me alive then or whatever, you'll realise that in 1994, we did not rely on the establishment to save us like they did in 2012. We did not rely on a compliant media to work our way out of this like they did in 2012. And we did not die like they did in 2012. Thanks for listening. Now I'm going to try and do a reading for the book something I've never done before in my life. It'll probably be crap, but please bear with me. And then I've got a special announcement at the end of this. So to try and put you in the context of this book, this is um, this is midway through the book, and the main character has had a bit of a doing, and he's kind of still a bit fucked up because of that and stuff. So this is from the last pale diver. I'm feeling better today, despite the fact I've not heard from Honey again. I'm not in as much pain. Harry phoned me there. Asked me to come round for him, and I fancy it. Celtic and Hibs both qualified for the League Cup semis last night. Celtic actually scored more goals than I've ever seen them score in my life. 9-1 at our broof. So maybe that is the reason for me being in a good mood. The Huns are playing Aberdeen the night at Ibrox, and we're both playing to get knocked out. We were listening on the radio, no doubt. I've still got 200 bar for the collection the boys had. They raised 350 quid, but they bought me a season ticket for 150. I'm glad as my money for being on the six still wasn't come through. Harry told me he'd come round for six and he would make my tea, so that's another couple of bob saved, as I've been eating the chippy a lot to save my ma cooking. I'll need to leave around about half five as it takes me longer to walk round now. It's only a ten minute walk, but my hip hurts like fuck when I walk too fast. When I get out the front door it's nice. I've not been out much except for the chippy and Celtic. I'm not scared, not scared to go out, I'm just wary. I wish I took that doing along somewhere like D Mains or somewhere I'm not along there that much, as I wouldn't have to see the spot that I took it every day of my life. I make it only Pennywell Road and I'm doing Kibby's Hill, but it's a strain. Thankfully, Harry's stair door is open. They put new doors on the stair last year, and the cunt never answers his buzzer, so you had to kick the fucking thing in if the back door wasn't open. In my condition, there was mere chance of Harry making steak the night, and no speciality of cheesy pasta, than there is of me kicking that door in. I didn't mind the cheesy pasta right enough, especially if there's toast there. Harry has a barry grill that cooks the toast perfect, so it's a delicacy we have savoured often. The cunt also got a soda stream for his Christmas. Meant to be a thing that makes your rain juice. Fucking pointless if you ask me. He's got a shop right next door to his stair and their juice is only 29p a bottle. That's for coca naughty. I get up to his flat and as usual the neighbours rad stug is out. They need to pull it in before you can go and tap Harry's door at bite cunts. Fucking thing needs put down. I never say stand there as the old man of the neighbours huds a dug back as I tap Harry's door. As usual, the cunt takes ages. Deliberately, I'm sure. But I hear him getting closer to the door, which he opens, and he looks at me like I'm a poll tax collector. Then he walks away, leaving the door ajar. I walk in and close it, noticing that his toilet door is open and it smells like someone has just had a bath. I bypass the living room and kitchen and head into his room, a state as usual. He's flopped on the bed reading what looks like the latest issue of Vox. I sit down on his unit and he hits me with it. Fucking unreal earlier. What? My old man asked me to get a letter for his jacket for him. I go to where it's hanging and what's there? I don't again. My hash and skins plus a roach. For fuck's sake, what did he say? He was alright really, but he did say that he knew you'd be spoken at day. Christ almighty. We ponder this for a while and Harry puts on the radio. Radio Scotland, the Huns game, will be on it and we are desperate for an Aberdeen win. We are droning on about the Huns so Harry puts it off and puts some sounds on. A mixtape he's done with the Happy Mondays, the Charlatans and Inspiral Carpets featuring heavily. Harry chirps up. See the draw for the semis is after the Huns game. Aye? Aye. Sports scene live, 10.35 the programme starts. Cool. Hibs and Dundee United other teams have qualified with us. I hope the other one is Aberdeen. The game is back on, and true to form, the Huns have gone one up, so we sort of tune out. It's making cheesy pasta at half time, he says. By the way, if you're wanting juice, I've got soda stream mixers, just know the filters. Can they make it fizzy? We chew the fat about things, and he asks about honey. 
So you've no hair for her since you got that doing? No. That's what we ordered, man. She should have at least phoned you likes, fucking cow. As he says that, it hurts me and I want to punch him in the face for it. But I keep cool and just nod like a daft cunt. Half time comes and he's into the kitchen to fire up the cheesy pasta. It doesn't take long to make and it fair fills you up. The cunt's not making toast but nay bread. We fill two massive plates of it and head to his living room to eat it. His old man isn't in now. I ask him what his old man concluded about his customs and excise for customs and excise like fine. No much, eh? What can he do? I'm twenty for fuck's sake, I'm old enough. On Harry's wall is a big gorilla. It's a charcoal effect done with the sort of things that are like chalk but not actually chalk. I hate the fucking thing. It's massive and done by some cunt in his yield. One day I'd like to throw out his fucking windy. We demolish our pasta and head back through for the second half. Harry crashing the ash as we stroke to the room. The second half has started and Aberdeen are pressing. Here. You heard of this new band for America? Seattle, I mean. Nirvana? No. Fucking Barry, by the way. Music is changing. I'm a scar-laced child with scar-laced, sorry, I'm a sky ch- ska child laced with a bit of hip hop and reggae, but it's dying and this grunt shit is taking over. I didn't get it. Smacks of a shiver of any me wankers who missed the boat on a ska track, the boat on ska trying to reinvent the rain me fad. Ska is fucking magic, but it's dangerous. It brings together a black and white man. And my old man always says, the eye want us at each other's throat, son. That's probably true, but I feel no animosity to the black man. Far from it. Bob Marley is a hero of mine. Peter Tosh as well. Then there's Madness and Ian Dury. They embraced the culture and evolved their music. The specials too. There was a boy called Drew who lived along the street for me that got me into the specials. I saw him coming along one day and he had like a Trilby hat on and a Harrington jacket with the tartan inside. Fred Perry polo on. He looked Barry. He helped me to come to his maz and listen to this song, Ghost Town. I was only about nine at the time and had never heard anything like it. I got my ma to buy it buy me at Vinyl Villains in Elm Row when she was in Leaf the following Saturday. She moaned like fuck as she doesn't only go further than Woolies at the curb gate. Drew told me to get it there. It had been out for a while and by then, and Vinyl always kept the quality stuff. I was at the football when she got it. Certainly it'd be Dundee, so I forgot all about it till I got back and saw it on my bed. I got a record player for my 8th birthday, so put it on six times in a row. Magic. Very far from bleak, man. The thing about it is, YES! Get in there! Harry jumps up. Aberdeen have equalised your fucking beauty. We both clench our fists and Harry does a dance similar to Bobby Robson after David Platt had scored for England against Belgium at Italia 90. We spar for a bit as the game goes into extra time. We sit pensively listening, praying Aberdeen score again. Then ever what happens though, and that bastard Ian Ferguson scores a winner. Deflated, we slump at the different ends of Harry's bed. Ah, well, still got the draw to come. Harry fires up his telly and it's an all gin. It takes a wee bit to warm up. Viv Lumsden is on the news and we switch to BBC for sports scene. They show the Huns game and we curse throughout. We get to the draw and Joe Jordan is here for Celtic at a now deserted Ibrox. Scotland hero, Big Joe. Scored in three World Cups in a row. Speaking of Scotland, I'll not be back as long as he cunts play at Ibrox. The draw gets made and it's Celtic v Rangers and Hibs v Dundee United in the semis in that order. That wanker Dookie Donnelly types up. We will now do a draw to see where Celtic will play Rangers. Eh? We came out first year cunt, it should be in paradise. They do a coin toss. Walter Smith is here for the Huns and he calls heads. Typical Hun. It's tails. Your fucking beauty. We will murder them in para. What the fuck? As Joe Jordan starts to talk about the joy of being at home, Donnelly pipes up. That was actually the toss to see who calls first Joe. <laughs> I look at Harry and he looks at me, moves open. Before we can even speak, they've tossed a coin again. Joe's called tails and it's heads. It's the beer Ibrox. I can hear my old man half a mile away kick our telly in. And like that, they are at home. The blows seem to come from everywhere these days. Like that doing I got. It's fucking relentless and it feels like every time we take one step forward, they take two. Why? I just didn't get it. No cunt can be that unlucky. Harry gets over his astonishment and is pleased with the draw. I'm pleased that we will get 18,000 tickets for Ibrox and ponder a huge support for us. And ponder a huge support for us there. My mind wanders to that when Harry's old man, Big Harry, bounds in and shouts at me. There he is, Pablo Escobar. I get the reference right away, so hit back with, ah, yeah, for the pain, eh? And he replies with a beery smile. 
wrong answer. We'll need to toss a coin to see who gets the next one right, eh? Thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. And just one final thing. Just one final thing before we have the quarterfinals come on and blow your mind. There is somebody in here tonight with an 18th birthday. Identify yourself, Peter Hill. Where is he? Peter, Peter. Come up here, Peter, please. Thank you. Faster. Faster. Now, Peter Hill is the son of Dermot Hill and the son of Helen, so you can tell that he always looks for Helen. And it's his 18th birthday, he's been petrified what we're going to do, but of course he's a member of the Selig family, so we're not going to do anything. Else. I'm just going to hand over this book as a, prize, as a present for him, and the book is inscribed with two Peter, 18 with a mullet, Paul Walker. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for coming along, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Everything I do is only made possible because of people like you. And I really, really appreciate your time and support and all the rest of it. I'll hand you back to the para. I hope you enjoy the quadrophenians of my gift to you. Hail, hail, and here's to the next league. Fucking Bangura night tonight, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Hey, has everybody here been to one of Paul's book launches before? Any first time virgins? No, many virgins in East End, mind you, but there are a few here. Um, this is my fourth book launch with Paul. The first one I went to was after we won the league against Kilmarnock. Uh, I got a lift after Bamford Castle, but I don't, I lift after the Paul boys. And uh, I don't bring anywhere, so found Jesus. And uh, we're getting the bus up for Kilmarnock Kul uh, Kul after winning the league, heading to the city centre. The bus was that bad, I was the only guy in the, on the bus that had Twitter. They're all sitting there drinking hot fast, and they said to me, where do you go on the night, Stevie? And I went, just as the music died, the rebel tunes died after, and I said, I'm, I'm going for a cappuccino in the Merchant City, and then I'm going to a book launch. The boy sitting behind me was actually drinking straight Angus Dury bottles and spat up the room, mate. So that's how good a night it was. Um, what, if any of you have got smartphones, I'd, I'd like to ask you a favour. If you don't owe any money to the Provident women or the focus unit aren't after you, can I ask you to get your phones out, please, and do a hashtag bump up book lunch, hashtag quadrophenians, hashtag Paul Larkin. But if you want to take a picture of yourself when you do that tweet, it lets everybody know who you are because I've been to four and I don't know half the fuckers in here tonight. So, if you want to take a wee picture of yourself, if all I'll know, I'll take somebody sit beside you. Hashtag Bampop Bam Book Lunch. Hashtag Quadrophenians. Hashtag Paul Larkin. If you want, um, your details are getting well up to it across the road anyway, so you might as well date yourself and cut the middle man out. Hopefully, I'm just waiting to to when the quadrophenians are going to start. Um, I'll keep waffling. I'll get my speech shoot, I'm only kidding. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody here tonight. We've got people from Drumchapel. Hey! Sons of Donegal. Hey! Denny. Hey! Newton Merns, I'll keep that fucking quiet, Chris. Hey! Edinburgh. This is a Celtic fan for cool winning in here. This is how good Larkin is, you know, it just comes out the back. Um, and that's about it. We've got a few people for Alexandra and stuff, a few Green Brigade guys somewhere. We've also got quite a lot of folk for you. There's a couple of scores here for Kev Cart, who are originally for Castle, like myself and Shane to see it. Um, we've also got some great guys here for Hail Hail Media, the KK. Jason Cameron, summed up the back, Mr. Hart, he knows who he is. Wally Keane's here, sober with food chicken pecora. I missed him, did Got a boys from Dublin, Paddy from Belfast, I'll keep that man quiet. 
Chris Steiner from Chapel and he's no fucking long life, is he? Um, we've also got a square for Carmel, but they don't live there anywhere, they know who they are. Um, I'll keep fucking waffling, like I told you, before the fiends are coming on. So the plan is tonight, obviously, Paul's um, as a gentleman walking about, if you want a copy of the book, get signed up for it and it'll be sent out to you as soon as. There'll be raffle tickets for the Celtic strip sign in the corner there. There'll also be the t-shirt made by Alter Dimages, the uh, Team Scheme one. Oh, there's the Golden Girls at the front. <laughs> the lovely Joe Girl and Miss Bailey's there. So, I'll start singing Bangura if it isn't quieting down. Um, and so, we'll do the raffle, and then as I say, the t shirt given to us by Alter Dimages is available for orders, any supporters' buses. I'm just getting it going, so I'm going, to, I'm going to shut up while I'm behind. I'll be back in a minute when I find out in the quad if he needs it on. Go Bangura CSE, cheers.
That's us for another podcast. Almost over the line now, but not quite. As I record this, we're still waiting to see what the final five SPL fixtures will be. But before we get to that, it's Scottish Cup semi-final weekend, which means another tip for us to hand in this time to face Dundee United. Hopefully we'll end up recent two run of results at the National Stadium and book a place in the Cup final at the end of May. But before I finish up, just a quick announcement from fans against criminalisation. They're pushing for people to email their MSPs calling for an inquiry into the policing of the Cup deal on Saturday 16th of March. There's a template email on the Celtic Trust site which you can reach by going to http www.celtictrust.net slash msps. There's also details to come about a protest at the Scottish Parliament on the 24th of this month, so keep listening out and you'll we'll be there for those details. You can also follow the Celtic Trust on Twitter at the Celtic Trust. There's Fans Against Criminalisation on Twitter at FAC Kill the Bill. And of course there's at Hail Hail Media for all the channel information and at HHM Paradise Rep for this podcast itself. But that's us for now. This has been the Paradise Report. Talk to you again soon.